Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Remington, and really I just want to talk to you guys about Worlds Adrift. First of all, I do want to make sure, because uh, I was asked in the comments last time around, that uh, I should definitely be linking the website, so if you guys do want to play for the al or apply for the alpha, the beta, all that good stuff, you can, so just click on that. It's on screen right now for you guys. See it? See it? Yeah, you see it. All right. Uh, other thing I want to let you guys know is if any time during this video you end up liking or enjoying anything I'm saying or are curious and want to see more videos about World of Drift and lots of other things, uh, make sure to like uh, if you do like something and uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to be always up to date on what we're doing. Um, so without further ado then, uh, let's get started. Um, first thing that I found out while playing lots of World of Drift is that if you are using a ship that has sails on it, uh, the wind has to be going the same direction as you. Um, I honestly just kind of thought that the little white lines flowing by the ship were just there at first. Uh, that's wrong. Uh, you definitely need to be going the same direction as those if you want to go fast using sails on a ship. Uh, that said, there's lots of other ways to move, like engines and things like that, but they have prerequisites, and we'll talk about that either in this video or another one altogether. Uh, the second thing that I want to make sure that you guys know about is uh, when looking around the lots of little islands floating in the sky, uh, there's a few different things that I thought were really cool. Uh, first of all, you can find some really cool crates, uh, and they have items like cosmetic things like clothes and materials or some old world items is how I like to think of them that you can actually salvage along with schematics and then there's some other plans that kind of incorporate into a little story for the game a little bit of background very much Dark Souls-esque uh, that you just kind of link those together in order to figure out what the story is that's uh, in the game um, the third thing that I want to let you guys know is to make any sort of changes to a ship uh, port is required and in order to make items that can be added to your ship you need to make something called an assembly yard. Now, here's what I really thought was interesting about this, and it's a sort of another number. Uh, to make some incredibly useful items, you want to press the tab button on your keyboard, which will pop up a whole bunch of stuff. But you're going to go into your little crafting menu there, and you can make items like the shipyard and the assembly yard, along with a pistol and bullets, which is really, really, really nice just to get those kind of things started up. Um, now, why else would you make a pistol and bullets unless you were going to have to fight somebody? Which, for me, happened uh, while I was filming this video. Just a random buckaroo uh, walked up, tried to engage him in friendly conversation, and about ten minutes later he flew over and I hear, Avasti! And the pirate came after me. Uh, so here's some tips that I learned about during PvP. Uh, first of all, using your item, which is like the salvage, uh, the salvage gauntlet that you get your first item, that you tear apart the world in order to get materials and things, that doesn't work on other people. You definitely need a pistol, um, along with those bullets. So if you do have to fight another person, make sure to use a gun and... Uh, make sure to hit them with it because it does cause significant damage and it gives you some hit markers when you do. Now, unlike with a person, um, you don't want to use the pistol on a ship. What you want to make sure to do in order to cause significant damage is use a salvage gauntlet. Uh, is it does a heck of a lot more. You can damage stuff with the pistol, uh, but honestly, if you're using a pistol, you may as well use one of the cannons that's available because that would be better for you. Um, but Along with that, one thing I suggested, because I was against three different folks when I ended up doing a counterattack, because it kept coming at me, specifically a guy named Ender, and I just was like, okay, well, I can't make repairs on my ship, so I'm just going to take them out. So I did exactly that. Um, you want to take out their stabilizers. They're the things that make the ship float. Um, or at least it's stabilizers in my head. That's sort of how I think of them. I'm not sure if that's the actual right name. It's uh, one of the uh, essential items, though, that keeps your ship in the air. So if you take those out, guess what's not going to be in the air anymore? Uh, the ship, and I definitely took out this pirate ship just doing that doohickey, which is nice. Another thing, sort of on that same idea, of things that you can do with ships, is you can actually pull your ship to make it dock in shipyards, which 
I thought was super cool. Uh, you can drag it, as you guys can probably see right here, that you just pull it along and it follows you. Which, surprisingly enough, I didn't think would actually work, especially with this one. This is the second tier uh, ship, because there's a few different types you can have. And I could still pull it just with one person, which was pretty cool. Um, you want to make sure at this point that it's not moving in any way, shape, or form. Otherwise, you might get dragged off the ship. So when you're using a gauntlet to make sure, uh, or the salvage gauntlet to make sure that you're getting items, like you're hitting trees and you're doing all this stuff to get materials, uh, when you run up to one of the larger rocks, what you want to make sure to do is aim for the metal items sticking out, is that's the actual way you collect the metal. Um, there isn't any like sort of random rocks or anything like that, as we've seen in the alpha so far at least, uh, that you can just pick up. You have to collect those metals and you have to do it that way. If you don't, there's a chance, especially because a lot of the rocks are on the cliff sides and things like that, that you can lose the materials. Um, so make sure to do it that way. Next thing I want to let you guys know, based off of that same idea, is a lot of the crafting uh, materials that you gather, whether it's metal or wood or trees or whatever you're getting, um, they have different grades. Um, so they'll be like type 1 or quality 1, quality 2, quality 3, quality 4, quality 5, um, from what I've seen so far. Now, in order to do any crafting, you have to do two things. First, you have to make sure to drag the item from the crafting menu, or from your inventory, into the crafting menu onto the spot. That took me quite a bit. The other thing that really threw me off is you can't mix qualities of metal or wood. So, just to put that in an example, if you have a quality 3 metal and a quality 5 metal of, we'll say, quality 3 tin and quality, tin, or quality 5 tin as well, you can't mix and match them. Uh, it has to be a hundred of the item if you're making like a metal uh, a metal thing to attach to your ship or something like that. It has to be the same amount. Uh, it has to be the same grade. And from what I've seen a little bit is it just ends up giving it more health if the quality is higher. Uh, I need to confirm that one a little bit more. But that's at least what my first assumption on that one is. Um, now another thing just because while we're talking about that is with crafting in particular, you can actually grapple you can actually grapple onto the shipyard bubble to help with the crafting. So it makes life a little bit easier when you're putting stuff on. Um, and off of that same idea, you can actually gra you can actually grapple to creatures uh, if need be. So there's a lot of uh, creatures that I've seen. They're generally the same so far. Honestly, I haven't seen that there's like a mapping system or anything like that in the game yet. Um, or if there will be, I'm not sure honestly. Uh, but a lot of the creatures that I've run into personally uh, are like these little uh, jellyfish things or these little guys that have like these little spikes that you can see here. Um, and those guys, you just kind of, you can grab onto them and attach. And that's kind of nice to know. Uh, it saved my life a few different times. Um, off of that same idea of a little bit of knowing, there's knowledge that you can actually gain in the game. Uh, your number four is something called a scanner, uh, and with those items you have, you have your first one, which is your scavenger, your second one, which is a repair item, the third one, which picks up stuff to attach it to your ship, but the fourth one is the scanner, and this scanner took me forever to figure out. I kept going up to items, I kept going up to ship parts and doing it. It'll tell you what the ship part is if you know it. Otherwise, it'll say, um, unknown ship part, and then it'll kind of give you almost like a something saying no knowledge and that didn't help me out too much but eventually I found out that there's these rocks uh, upon further investigation of looking at patch notes and things like that they're called Saborian data banks when you attach to those that's actually how you get knowledge um, and what you can do from knowledge kind of taking it from there is you can actually uh, use it to purchase schematics um, from what I've seen is everybody starts off with one type I ended up somewhere along the line getting a different sort of schematic that I could purchase because I had originally engines and now I have wings. But if you continue to buy one type of item, it levels it up so you can get more of a rarity sort of item. So for instance, I can get uncommon uh, engines now. Um, and it'll teach you how to craft it and you can have multiple versions. Now that said, I'm not sure if it's just getting from multiple schematics of that same sort of item or what. But that's kind of cool, definitely. Uh, at least I feel like it because it makes it a little bit of a tree system because you want to spend your knowledge on something you feel like will actually be useful down the line. Roll to Drift is an MMO, so expect, expect to fight and interact with other players like Ender that I was mentioning earlier that I ran into and we had a whole bunch of shenanigans. Um, the other thing that I thought was really cool is with 
Worlds Adrift being very much of this sandbox style of game, um, the thing that I thought was just awesome is a lot of places there's like relics of ships and items that have been damaged. Like you'll go to a place and you'll see that there's been trees that have been collapsed. You'll see ships that have actually been like abandoned and left in either those shipyards or they've just hit the ground and fallen. And when I was reading up on the game, I found out that all of those places are from other players. Um, no random generated shenanigans. It's all been involved with players. So there's players that have had things crash, have had things fall, and their items have gotten lost. And I just think that that is super neat. So you can see that there's people around you and you can also run into them. Um, one other tip that I would always suggest to folks um, is honestly, if you're about to go land on somebody's ship or if you're going to go talk to them or whatever, make sure to actually talk to them first before you do it. Otherwise, they might get a bad idea of what you're doing and just go right after you. I know that the game is filled with quite a few griefers at this point um, from at least what I've gotten from the Reddit forums. But that said, guys, it's a lot of fun. And honestly, just let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, this is like my first 15 minutes or 15 tips and ideas that I've gotten out of it. Um, and I mean, during the making of this video, I played for like three or four hours, honestly. And these were the 15 that I thought were the most helpful. If you want more of this kind of stuff, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Just shout it out. Um, but on that note, guys, that's all I've got to say. Worlds Adrift is definitely interesting. So let me know if you want.